I think it was never the intention and view of Sean O'Brien to do that kind of confrontation, to take on UPS, but also to take on Amazon and the government, which is what you're doing. Four one five. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Steve Zeltzer from San Francisco, and I'm actually a producer of Work Week. So yes, I thought I'd call I, it. I'm I, glad I, you're I, doing the show. Yeah, brother, I recognize you from the uh, Labor Radio podcast. Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Meetings. What's yeah. on your mind? So, well, I mean, I I was at my uh, convention at the Newspaper Guild, and Chris Shelton. Uh, of the head of the CW, the past head of the CW, was asked by a member of my union, uh, the News Guild, how he could support the Teamsters if you went on strike. And uh, Chris Shelton said that he hadn't been contacted by uh, Sean O'Brien, and he didn't know what was going on. Now, you know, if you look at what happened in the Ron Carey struggle, one of the strengths of the fight that Ron Carey made is he united the entire labor movement. So about part-time work, and he had rallies with all unions, hmm. and that is a, is a an, an opportunity. If you're really going to fight UPS and the, and mobilize, you have to unite the entire labor movement. Sean O'Brien never did that, never did that, which meant, in my view, that he really wasn't serious about taking on UPS. He was going to cut a deal uh, because uh, there are many other strikes going on around the country, and they could have had rallies. Uh, to unite these struggles, SAG-AFTRA, many, many strikes, and unite with other workers who are fighting the same conditions. So it's not a, an issue of the Teamsters and UPS. It's a, it's a class issue, bringing the entire working class together. Mm. I don't think that was his view, uh, and that's why, um, you know, they didn't get 25 as a basic wage, which could have happened by UPS. UPS can afford 25 bucks minimum wage for all workers who work for UPS. They didn't do it. And the other thing you have going is you have all these separate agreements, contracts. I mean, you don't really have one national master contract that they had under freight where you have the same conditions, the same benefits nationally. They pit a low, a, a regions against regions and they undercut each other. Mm. That's why there are a lot of complaints on your calls of people, different things here, different things there. That's how the company wants it because they play mm -hmm. each other. They do the same with CWA with the telecom. Telecom, separate negotiations, separate regions. This is a, a recipe to help the managers, actually, and the owners pit, uh, can pit, uh, pit people against each other so they don't have a real master contract. So I, I think it's a, uh, a contract that uh, has, you know, serious problems, and it, it really uh, undercuts the rest of the working class movement in this country because the fight for 25 is a minimum. They didn't do it. They promised it, and uh, I think that, you know, that – that's uh, that's a real problem, and uh, I think um, members. I mean, members have to make their own choice, but I don't think it's the best contract they could have gotten, and there are reasons for it. They could have gotten a great contract. Mm. Right now, there's a shortage of labor. They need workers in this country, and uh, they could have mobilized the entire labor movement behind them and united with the other struggles that are going on. And so, I think that's really what we have to organize towards in this country: uh, a unification of, of all the unions instead of everybody do their own separate thing. I mean, it's the same with AI. Uh, the mm. writers uh, and the sag after you need to unite with the Teamsters, need to unite with healthcare workers, educators who are fighting AI because it's coming into all these industries. That, that was never an issue in the, in the Teamsters, even though they're, they're developing automated trucks, which is going to wipe out millions of teepers, teach, uh, Teamsters. In San Francisco, they're bringing in robo-taxis, which are going to wipe out all the taxi drivers. I mean, you know, it's coming. It's coming. This AI is coming for the working class. Goldman Sachs said 350 million workers may lose their job around the world. So we're talking about a, a very uh, existential crisis for labor. And that wasn't even addressed. It wasn't addressed in the longshore negotiations in the IOW either. Uh, I think that a lot of these union officials are afraid of addressing because it's not just one company. It's not just one issue. It's a system problem we're dealing with. How is right. technology going to benefit or help or hurt working people. And that is a real fundamental issue if workers are going to survive. And as a here, I mean, they've got these wrecks, the, the robo taxis are running to fire trucks and uh, creating mayhem in San Francisco. And 
the Newsom, the, the governor, allow them to do what they want. I mean, there's no uh, California Public Utility Commission. They don't. There's no real regulation, uh, and they're allowing this technology to be introduced, even though it's uh, still being developed. People are being used as guinea pigs, and it's the same with with AI and, and other areas in in the economy. So these are some of the issues that are not being addressed, really. Uh, certainly not in the, in the Teamster contract, but also mm-hmm. in the Longshore contract. So, uh, you know, I can't I can't speak to, uh, obviously, the, the Kerry campaign. I, I don't know I- exactly how integrated they were with the rest of the labor movement. But I do know that, I mean, Sean, uh, Sean O'Brien had, <clears throat> you know, Sean Fain and, you know, a bunch of politicians at some rallies. Uh, and I went through um, a- a- and I actually met him at a rally for Amazon workers here in Alabama um, where he was supporting, the Teamsters were supporting uh, RWDSU in their campaign at Bessemer. So, you know, I don't, uh, of course, you know, maybe there's, there's always an opportunity to do more. Um, and I think that, I, I think that Sean Fain has been doing a pretty good job of connecting the UAW's struggle to, uh, other people's struggle. You know, he explicitly mentioned the SAG AFTRA and the WGA strike last week in his update. Right. Uh, that, that was really cool to see. And, um, but you know, the, there's always, always room for, for more integration. Yeah. But I guess I, from where, from where I was sitting, I, I thought that, that, the labor shines were were doing a, a reasonably good job of of kind of connecting uh you know connecting their struggles to everybody else but you know of course i, I don't know comparatively have to keep pushing. yeah and i don't know comparatively how good it, how 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 good it was compared to to ron Carey. i wasn't really kind of conscious for that i was i was alive but only barely <laughs> um <laughs> i really appreciate you your yeah, call steve and I really appreciate that perspective and bringing that that perspective into the conversation uh, because you know I, I think you brought up a lot that that we haven't mentioned today that I think is really relevant. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm/donate. Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, I, I I carry that that campaign. You know, after that strike was over. The New York Times had an article. They said the problem with, with Ron Cherry is he convinced the American working people, the mass of public, that this was about part-time work, mm. that that struggle was about part-time work. In other words, Cherry was successful in, in uniting workers and, and under, for them to understand, yeah, this is a struggle for all workers, not just the team search. As far as Amazon, uh, I don't think Amazon is going to be organized through the NLRB. Mm. The NLRB is a process. It was set up really to prevent organize, mass organizing, and like uh, the workers that did, did try to got a vote successfully, they're just bleeding them out and getting rid of the organizers. Mm-hmm. It's going to require, uh, you know, uh, workers to go out on strike and from thousands of other workers to surround these warehouses and say you're not going to operate. That's not something Sean O'Brien wants. Hmm. He doesn't want mass demonstrations of thousands of workers at these Amazon warehouses. That's how they're going to be organized. That's how they were, the organizing was done in the 30s and 40s. It was by mobilization of the entire working class. And the, I know they're picketing in Palmdale, and Jose Negrete is involved in that, but, you know, they're firing uh, Teamster contractors who work for Amazon, and, uh, you know, they're being retaliated against. There's no national campaign to shut these warehouses down. And mm. force these companies to to negotiate a contract. The same with Starbucks. Starbucks is refusing to sign contracts, even though 300 stores have voted to have a union. They're just bleeding them, starving them out. And uh, these these companies are playing hardball. And using the NLRB is not the way you're going to beat these companies. And I think that's the entire thrust of of not just Sean O'Brien, but other other union officials. We're going to go through the NLRB. Dead end. Dead mm. end. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess I I would uh, it would it would surprise me if if Sean O'Brien would would be opposed to to a mobilization of, of Amazon workers to kind of shut shut things down to to unionize. I mean, you know, he you know, he utilize the the apparatus of the IBT to put together a lot of practice pickets across the country where you know hundreds of UPS workers were kind of showing that that they were ready to strike if if UPS kind of didn't buckle um and and I think you know the the issue is, is just 
you know, creating the creating the organization inside of Amazon, I I would I, I would certainly hesitate to kind of level the accusation that that Sean O'Brien would be opposed to such a mobilization if if it were <clears throat> if it were accessible or possible at this time. Well, I mean, okay, there's organizing going in on on Amazon, and the Teamsters and other unions are trying to organize. But a strike is the way you're going to win over the Amazon workers. The Teamster mm-hmm. power of UPS, if they'd gone out and then appealed to Amazon workers, join us and FedEx. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, one way you'd win a strike in one day, you shut down Amazon, FedEx, and UPS, and you'll get a contract for all these workers. Think about that. If Amazon, UPS, and FedEx shut down, they would have to sign a contract with these workers. That's the kind of mobilization that would force these companies to, it would, it would force them to, to go under. But that means that not just a fight against these companies, it's the government. It's like right. shutting down the country. When you shut down the country, you're not just shutting down these companies. You're shutting down the country. And that means you're shutting down Biden and, and you're shutting down the government. That's a very powerful political thing. That's a, like a general strike. It's not a general strike because it's one section of industry. But it, it, that's the way you organize all the Amazon and FedEx workers. They go out together with UPS. Hmm. And that becomes a political issue, which it is. Because right. presently... They're not allowing these workers to organize. I mean, thousands of workers are fired every year for, who simply want a union. You mention a union on, on, an organ, on a job that's not union, you get fired. That's why right. people are afraid to join in this country. Mm. That's the reality for, for the working class in this country. So that kind of mobilization is necessary. I think it was never the intention and view of Sean O'Brien to do that kind of confrontation, to take on – to take on UPS, but also to bring to take on Amazon and the government, which is what you're doing. That's not his view. Mm. He wasn't talking that way. He wasn't. In fact, when he was interviewed on on MSNBC uh, prior to the strike, he didn't even mention Amazon. He didn't say, I- "Look, our fight is also about organizing Amazon workers." I mean, you know, you have to speak. The Amazon workers. You have to speak to the I thought FedEx he did. I thought speak. he did mention, and, and I don't know if maybe there was an MSNBC interview that he didn't mention it, but I thought there were multiple times where he said that that yes, this is also about organizing Amazon workers. Well, when, I he, when, did. He, was, when he was, yeah, if he was asked, he might have mentioned it. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I wanted just to just jump in and say. Uh, that that I I totally hear your perspective here, and I, I mean I think we've got to think big and and think bold uh, about organizing and and organizing as a working class. My I think the billion dollar question in my head is, you know, do we have that sort of strength right. that's there now, or if not, what do we need to be doing now to get to that point? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I I I agree with you uh, in terms of the the way we can actually make progress and and the need the urgent need to make that progress because as you said uh for so many workers in this country just saying the word union Mm -hmm. just looking like a union is enough to get you fired enough to get you blacklisted from your industry um it's enough to really ruin your life right and 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 even in situations where you have unions, you have managers that are routinely violating contracts and unions uh, that are not militant enough to enforce the contracts. And you have people being harassed and mistreated and, you know, kicked around and treated like shit in this country, all over the country in industry after industry. And so, yeah, I, I appreciate your perspective, Steve. Yeah, well, and, and you know, and of course, you know, Amazon, FedEx, UPS, all all of those workers going out on strike would obviously be a big thing. But, you know, I mean, it's just uh, obviously the, the workers at, at FedEx and, and Amazon are not organized to be able to pull something like that off. Uh, but, you know, something like this UPS contract, I, I think is it's. It, it, it's possible that this is going to help them get organized. You know, there's there was an article in Labor Notes by Luis Leon a couple of weeks ago that, that I thought was really interesting, where he talked to Amazon workers reacting to the tentative agreement. And, you know, this one, uh, uh, Paul Blundell, 
an Amazon warehouse worker, said, <clears throat> quote, everybody's jaw dropped. We top out at $20.90 after three years, so UPS is now starting well above that with raises for the rest of the contract. And UPS part-timers also have low deductible health insurance with no premiums. They have pensions, stuff like that. At UPS's uh, Philadelphia Air Hub, the current wage for an inside worker starts at 20 an hour and 22 for night. And so, you know, they're like, I think that that is, you know, even, even if it's not necessarily what everybody wanted i mean this it it is already kind of appealing to some of these people in amazon warehouses and and hopefully that'll you know you'll be able to take this and and take uh take this contract and take what workers were able to do to win it to some of these amazon workers and say look you know you could have this you could have this here you could have you know um and uh uh but it's absolutely going to take that that education and organization to to be able to help them win that for themselves well it requires education and organization you can't yep. change anything in the world without those two things so that's yep. critical Absolutely. Uh, Steve Zeltzer show, is on. Uh, he, Steve Zeltzer is a, uh, a radio host on KPFA in California. Uh, the program is called Work Week. You can also find it on on as a podcast, right? Yes. KPOO in San Francisco and KPFK in Los Angeles. They have a show called uh, Working Voices LA, and also Capitalism, Race, and Democracy in Pacifica. And we got to support labor programming. It's great you're doing a show. We need more shows. I mean, this is a voice for working people. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks brother. I really appreciate it. Uh, and you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. We need we need more labor media, more labor education. Uh, we've just got to get the message out there to working folks uh, because there are generations of folks who, who mm -hmm. have missed out on that kind of education and don't have a union heritage in their family or haven't been exposed to unions in the workplace yet. Uh, and so we've got to just keep talking to folks and keep listening to folks and, and working together. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.